Hi, this is Ruth Royal from Youth Pledge for Employers, and I'm really delighted to be here today with Georgie Lilburn, who's General Manager at Clip and Climb Ipswich. Georgie, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you, lovely to meet you too, Ruth. And um, so, Georgie, first of all, tell us a bit about Clip and Climb and what sort of work happens there. So, Clip and Climb is obviously think most people do think it's just a child centre, and it's not. It's uh, it's a centre that's for everyone. Um, adults can climb, children can climb, you can climb as a family. We get corporate people in, so we get businesses in to climb and we get a lot of schools in to climb. So as part of their sort of away sort of packages and stuff. The main thing about this place is it's a family run business and we like to employ staff that are fun, engaging and want to work with um, customers and have a real um customer engagement level to them so here we have a climbing center so obviously out basically in front of me now i can see a good view of it and um, as we as we sit here on on this recording is we have a 48 walls in the center and then we have a restaurant upstairs as well so it's a huge building and we get a lot of wows as people walk in the door um, so there's a lot of roles here. There's a lot of different roles as well. So there's some permanent staff and then we've got a lot of zero hour staff here as well. But the main thing about this place is it's fun. It's exciting. And even if you're a staff member here, you, you have as much fun every day as, as our customers do when they walk through the door. Oh my gosh, what a fantastic environment to be in. I mean, that must be great if you really enjoy climbing and activity and people. Uh, it sounds like a brilliant job. So you mentioned that there are different types of roles that people do. Would you talk us through sort of what some of those different types of roles are and perhaps the different skills that you might need to do them? Yeah, so obviously with all our roles, it is very much um, customer facing. So a lot of the roles are that you've got to have, um, it's like coming into work and you put a massive smile on your face and it's all about engaging with customers and customer engagement is our biggest, biggest thing here. So throughout the business, we have a lot of roles and they are all working with people. So none of our roles are tucked away in offices. They are out there and you're engaging with customers the whole time so we've got receptionist roles so anyone 16 and above can work on our reception we get you trained up and you're basically the face of clip and climb as they walk through so it's about having a smile on your face and it's about greeting people it's about making sure that you're organized you know your way around the computer and checking people in and just being on top of any customer feedback that we get so not always you dealing with it. Sometimes the manager comes, but most of the time, a lot of it is that you just deal with situations as they come. So being on your feet, sort of always sort of knowing something might come left, something might come right, but knowing what to do and how to face that. But you have lots of training um, as we go through. We then got our arena and we have arena support. So arena support is all about being with the customers. You have to do briefings. You get trained on our extreme challenges. So they're the two different walls that customers can't go on without help. So you have to be trained on those to make sure that they're safe. So there's a safety element to the role. There's a customer engagement element to the role. And there is just being enthusiastic, just making sure that there's there's not a lot of skill to the role. But if you've got a personality and you're able to smile and you're able to get amongst people, and have the confidence to talk to people. That's always what we look for when we employ people here. So obviously the arena, you've got also an arena leader. They, they tend to be a little bit older. So someone that's a bit, bit, more, respons bit more responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the center, making sure that any safety checks are carried out and making sure that our staff are working as hard as they can out there and getting amongst the customers. Other than that, we have our cafe upstairs, which is, is is more of a restaurant these days. So we've got our cafe leader role, which is very much a host role. So you meet and greet people as you come upstairs. It's about having confidence. It's about making sure that um, you're quick on your feet dealing with any issues that may arise. And then we obviously have um, a kitchen porter role, which is like a pot washer role. And that's just working with the chefs, making sure that they have all of the necessary equipment they need to make sure the kitchen runs as well as it does. Then you've got your cafe support role, your climber. Um, so we've, we've recently um, 
renamed our cafe to a diner so it's more it's a climber diner now so we've, so it's it's more diner support um and that's coffee making taking orders running service and all of that comes with just making sure that you're able to talk to people and you have the confidence to get amongst people and deal with any issues that arise and then we obviously have our more permanent roles so we've got myself who's a general manager and my role is basically thinking on my feet all the time um trying to you know put out any fires that come come up <laughs> um staffing issues so any staff so staff might call me right now and say georgie i can't come in i've got an emergency and that's me having to think on my feet what i can do in that situation we have um some we have a cleaning and maintenance man that does everything that you could imagine um and he is but definitely a permanent uh, member of our team and yet yeah, he gets amongst the whole center and just keeps it shining every day which is brilliant for us um and then you have the two directors which is very much jo mark and josh who are the two directors here at pick and climb they um they they are very much part of the business and they do they do stay here quite a lot they you know they they are amongst it they're not directors that sort of look in from within they, they are here every day um which is brilliant for, for us and for the staff to get to know them so and then obviously we have our chefs we've got two chefs up in the kitchen um and we've got one that has just been made up to a catering manager so he sorts all things orders which is brilliant um takes pressure off me um so i can really focus on the whole center rather than just one part of the center and then we have a chef who is fantastic she's amazing she uh she makes lots of cakes and keeps keeps everything ticking along so yeah they're our roles here and they're all i would say every single one of those roles is about making sure you're engaging with people and you have the confidence to engage you've got that side to you that you don't don't mind just going in and it's not about being cool in that second it's just about making sure that you are putting on your best show for those customers um, and that's what our staff do every day Oh my gosh, that's such a brilliant overview and that I could really visualise there, you know, how you've got these different sort of teams doing different things, but how they're all interrelated in terms of making that whole customer experience for people that come to you. So um, it seems to me that obviously, you know, you need to have that real customer focus in terms of what you do to represent your your brand essentially to the people that are coming coming in yeah for also, us it's yeah we get amongst the staff quite a lot in terms of it's it's very much team culture it's it's about working so at the moment our numbers are we our numbers aren't as high as they were before covid um but for us it's about not having certain amount of staff in, in areas it's about actually being a team environment so you might be in the arena one minute and then you might be upstairs taking trays out to people upstairs in the cafe but if you're able to do both roles and you're versatile it gives you that experience in both areas but if you are able to engage in pe with people out in the arena you're able to engage with people out up in the cafe so it's a very you know don't they cross over and they're really re they're really easy roles but you've got to let yourself fill the role and get into the role and make sure that you are you know you enjoy all our staff if we ask them do you enjoy working here every single one of them say yes oh that's brilliant and, and i guess that you've um, obviously you put a lot of emphasis on the internal training that you do but i guess people coming if they were to say come from uh come from college or something like that and they've got a background in activities um or sort of sports then that might be very helpful for people who are in your arena support uh <laughs> if they yeah i would say for us ruth um most of the, the the brilliant staff we get are staff that um have a little bit of a background of working with children before or even just having siblings that are that are younger than them um <laughs> yeah. which yeah, you can't. Obviously, that's that's not a drop. That's not something you can learn. You just get given a brother or sister that are younger than you. But you know, it's it's about being able to get down to that level and talk to mm -hmm. talk to children in a way that you know um, that gets the most out of them. It's a it's a confidence builder here, and yeah. especially in the arena, it's about making sure that they have the best experience that they have when they come. Um, and our staff, the reviews we get, most most of the reviews are always about your staff are brilliant they really get amongst oh, our, wow. our children they got the most out of me today they built my confidence um and yeah i would say oh, if it's really rewarding college, 
yeah massively rewarding and that's what that's what the staff love but i would say yeah most of the people that are if you've studied a sports background you're onto a winner in terms of being out there because it's very sport related you're able it's very it's very active it's exercise every single half an hour for those guys out there um and you're able to maybe sort of get amongst them and talk to them about you know where to put their foot next or where to put their hand next because you've got that background in sport however even if you've been just at even if you're studying math science and english at a level and you know you've got no sport but you might have that personality that really shines out there and that's that's the good yeah. thing there's no there's no qualifications needed it, it's just mainly about your personality Oh, that's really interesting to hear. And do you think that um, do you think that for you, Georgie, in terms of that sort of culture that you're creating, that the particular sort of you've obviously reflected on the kind of being really sort of positive um, with people. But are there any other skills that are helpful, like being organised or th those sorts of things? So, so for us, obviously, and this comes with any job that you go into, um, we say we we call we use a phrase Lombardi time, which obviously is in a lot of podcasts and stuff. And for me, that's something that I've tried to get amongst the staff about because here you can't just rock up and go straight into it. You've got to get your harness on or upstairs. You've got to be aware of what's in the kitchen, what we're not selling, what we've sold out of. So it's, it's not being on time, but actually for us, it's being 10 minutes early. So you're able to be ready for your shift. And as soon as that shift starts, you should have your harness on. So at half past two, if your shift starts at half past two, think about getting here maybe 25 past two. So you can prepare yourself to be ready to then kick on for that half past two start. So definitely being organised, definitely um, thinking on your feet. Um, so being able to adapt to certain situations is a massive thing here because one, you might be dealing with a, a real youngster and then five minutes later, you might be dealing with a, a a 30 year old woman that is really scared on the walls and you've got to adapt to that situation and um, making sure that you know you're the skill in terms of being trained it's just making sure that you are able to be quite methodical in in the way you think so there are certain things that sometimes you've got to there's a system to it and a process and it's about following those systems and processes um so that we are safe and we're secure out yeah there. So you've got to be rigorous and not be somebody that would like to take a quick shortcut. <laughs> you've got exactly, to be really careful. Yeah, no, no shortcuts here. No, those, yeah, exactly. Following through those processes. And and Georgie, I know um, that you sort of came to this like through a different route. Tell us a bit about your journey into your role as general manager. So, yeah, my route is probably not um, a real simple one. So I went to university when I was 18, studied sport and exercise science, was really into sport. Um, always wanted to be a PE teacher and never had my eyes set on anything else. So I went and did a gap year at the school that I was at as a as a youngster. So um, went back there and did a gap year for a year. And that taught me everything I needed to know about teaching. It was a really, really good year and I got so much out of it. And then from there, I went, um, I stayed at the school and they offered me to do my PGCE, which is obviously a teaching qualification. And from that, I was a trained teacher and I was able to then start taking my own lessons and doing everything that, yeah. you know, you dream of as being a teacher. Um, four years of just being a PE teacher, I then became head of year seven. Um, so I adapted my role a little bit and I was obviously teaching PE at the same time as being um, going down that pastoral route. That was me trying to figure out whether teaching and school environment was really for me. And I was set on it for the rest of my life, because as you I was 21 when I went into teaching and you don't retire till you're about 65. So that was that's a, that's a long time as a teacher. So for me, it was about is there anything else that I can go into? And one of the big things that private schools now they look for is a director of sport that's got an eye for business um, and they're able to bring in different revenue streams um, from different areas. So it's not just you're in school. And one of the things that I spoke to the headmistress about when I was there is what, what could I do to add to my my bow, as, as you say? And she said, well, business is a big thing now in private schools. And because I went to private school, I, I like that environment and the sport there is fantastic, brilliant. So 
this opportunity came up as general manager um, at Clipping Climb, and it was a no-brainer for me, really. It was something that would add so much to my CV and lots of different things. So I might be doing the ordering for the kitchen one minute, and then I'm sorting out staffing, and then I'm sorting out budgets for sales and marketing, and then I'm trying to cut costs because we've had lower numbers. So really versatile role that will put me in good stead if I was to go back into a teaching environment and in a school environment. For me, teaching, I think, would just be too one dimensional for me now. And I, I would need different things going on to, to keep me occupied. I'm someone that likes to have a lot of things going on. So my journey hasn't been a simple one. But what I would say is my teaching background and my what I did learn from teaching has helped massively to think on my feet and one of the big things as a teacher you can't get stressed because as soon as you get stressed the students know that you're stressed so for me in a business background it's very easy to get stressed about things but because of my background in teaching I don't and the two directors say wow you you don't you don't seem to get stressed about anything a staff member could call you right now and say they're not coming in but you don't flap it's just you deal with it and that's where as you go through life I would say try and do different things and it's not about just being a you know a one you go into something and that's your whole life it's about yeah. trying to maximize how much you can get out of your life and your working life because any skill that you can add it will put you in good stead for the next job you go into and that's for me is a big thing is teaching will be in my heart forever because it taught me so many things about how to adapt in different ways and that's not a I'm not going back. That's more that I know now that I've got teaching. I could go back to it tomorrow if I wanted to. Um, but I could also go and do something else now because I've learned so much. Yeah. From this um, so, yeah, for me, it's just about widening that horizon as much as you can. And that's really interesting because usually I finish these talks with people by asking if there was one piece of advice that you would give your younger self, sort of young Georgie, starting out yeah. on your career, what would it be? For me, um, I was always I was always good when I was younger about not just blocking myself off. So I uh, I'm, a, I'm a very keen sports person. I play a lot of sport. A lot of people used to say, well, concentrate on one sport, Georgie. Why, why would you do five or six sports? Just concentrate on one. But actually, for me, I learned a lot from all different sports. And what I learned from football, I took into netball. What I learned from netball, I took into cricket. And there's all different disciplines in those sports that you have to try and learn. Yeah. And it's not about just shutting yourself off. And if an opportunity comes up, take it. Just go with it and take it. Because whatever happens, you you won't regret any opportunity you take because it will put you into a much better point as you move on. So for me, when I went to university, I could have gone straight into doing a teaching degree. I decided to do sport and exercise science because for me that widened my what I could do it wasn't just your teacher and that's it um so I did sport and exercise science then added PE to it in my second year and then obviously from there I was able to go on to all different things so try and open yourself up more and not just block yourself into one route because there are so many routes out there and it's a long it's a long working life these days so you want to try and keep it as fun and enjoy work don't resent going in every day is my biggest thing if you wake up and you resent going into work then you should you need to change your job perfect advice that's a great note to end on georgie thank you so much for your time no worries it's been brilliant thank you ruth